All right, in this video, we're going to learn how to solve linear systems. So here's an example of a linear system. x1 plus 5x2 is equal to 7. Negative 2x1 minus 7x2 is equal to negative 5. And I've converted it to a matrix so we can see how we do this at each step. So what can we do to linear systems? Well, if you remember from high school, we can multiply an equation and subtract it or add it. So let's do that. I'm going to multiply the first equation by 2. So that way we can eliminate these x1s and be left with only x2s and then we can solve. So 2 times x1 is 2x1. 2 times 5x2 is 10x2. And 2 times 7 is 14. We're not touching the second equation, so I will just copy it as it is. Okay, so here's our new set of equations. These are equivalent to the first set. So we can encode these as a matrix. We can do 2, 10, 14, and negative 2, negative 7, negative 5. So that's our new matrix. And now we can add the two equations together, so that way we can get rid of our x1s. So we're going to be left with 0x1 plus 3x2 is equal to 9. So that means that x2 is going to be equal to 3. So there's one solution. x2 is equal to 3. So we can plug this back into one of our original equations. So we have x1 plus 5x2 is equal to 7. So that means that x1 plus 5 times 3, because x2 is equal to 3, that's going to be 7. So x1 plus 15 is equal to 7, which means x1 is going to be equal to negative 8. So now we have our solution for this equation. So we can write here that x1 is equal to negative 8, and x2 is equal to 3. So this is the point where two lines are going to intersect at negative 8 and 3. So that's how we solve linear systems uh, the old high school way. Now that we have matrices, it really doesn't make much sense to write out everything all the time. So we have these things called elementary row operations that correspond to what we do with all of our variables and those long equations. So there's three things we can do. We can replace rows, interchange rows, or scale rows. I'm going to talk about scaling first. So scaling, what we can do is we can multiply a row by any number. So for instance, what we can do is we can say, look, R1, this first row, R1, we're going to turn it into one-fifth of the first row. So we've multiplied the first row by one-fifth. This is the same thing as dividing by five. And now what we get is we get the row 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. So we can scale. And of course, we saw this in the first row here where we multiplied the first row by 2. So if you multiply the first row by 2, 1 times 2 is 2, 5 times 2 is 10, 7 times 2 is 14. So it corresponds to the following matrix below it. So that's scaling. You can multiply one row at a time. When we interchange rows, we just swap the positions of them. So this doesn't really have any meaning yet. You're saying, why would we ever do this? Well, in the future, it'll make sense. So we can swap row one and row two. So we can now have one, four, nine, zero, two, three. So we just swap the positions of them. Replacement is the most complex one. And that is when we take a row and we add some number of another row to it. So for instance, let's take row 1. What we're going to do is we're going to take row 1 and we're going to subtract 3 of row 2. So this might seem a little bit complicated. So what we're doing here is we're taking row 1, we're multiplying row 2 by 3, and then we're taking away 3 of row 2 from row 1. So here's what's going to happen. Do this in two steps. So step 1, we're taking 3 of row 2. So we're going to get 6, 3, 1 and 6, 3, 0. 
Now what we're going to do is we're going to take row 1 and we're going to subtract row 2. So it's going to be row 1 minus row 2. That's going to be the new row 1. So we're going to get 6 minus 6 is 0, 3 minus 3 is 0, and 1 minus 0 is 1. Then row 2 hasn't been touched. So this is our end result here. But replacement just does it all in one step. It says, okay, we're going to take row 1, and this is going to become row 1 minus 3 of row 2. So for the first couple of videos, I'll show all these steps. I'll write them out explicitly. But after that, um, it should be easy to do in your head, hopefully. So these are elementary row operations. You can do any of these in a matrix and preserve its solution set. So if, t if the augmented matrices of two linear systems are row equivalent, then the two systems have the same solution set. What do I mean by this? I mean that, okay, let's take a matrix. Let's call it uh, 2, 1, 5. And here we're going to have 2, 0, um, shouldn't do 0, 2, 3, and 8. If I multiply a row by 2, so I say, let's take 2 of row 1. So now we have 4, 2, and 10, and 2, 3, and 8. These two matrices will have the exact same solution set as each other. So we could solve for this. In fact, it might not be a bad idea. I'll do that in the next slide. But if we do any elementary row operation, it has the same solution set. Why is that? Because we can reverse it. So now what we can do is we can say, OK, let's take 1 half of row 1. So then we have 2, 1, 5, 2, 3, 8. And we end up with the exact same matrix we have before. So if these weren't row equivalent, then this could have a different solution set from this matrix. That wouldn't make any sense. That wouldn't be good. So when we do these elementary row operations, they have the same solution set. That's why we're able to solve. Okay, so let's solve a system now. First things first, you see a bunch of equations. It's ugly. Don't, we don't deal with these equations anymore. We are now adults. We use matrices. So let's encode. The first line, there's 0x1s, there's 1x2, there's 5x3s, and that equals negative 4. Second row, 1x1, 4x2s, 3x3s, that equals negative 2. Last row, 2x1s, 7x2s, 1x3 equals negative 2. Okay, what are we going to do now? Well, we have an algorithm for solving these. We're not going to go over that algorithm now, but we'll give you the general idea of what we do. First of all, we want a number in the top left here. So I'm going to interchange some rows here. It's just going to look a little bit nicer. So what we're going to do is we're going to swap row 1 and row 3. So we're going to get 2, 7, 1, negative 2, 1, 4, 3, negative 2, and 0, 1, 5, negative 4. That's the first thing we do. Now, we want to get rid of this one here. So we want to eliminate a bunch of x1s. So there's only one equation with x1s left. So let's do that one. Let's get rid of that one right there. So it's a little bit challenging to do. So what we're going to do is, well, instead, we're going to take it off the first row. We're going to leave that one there. So our r1. We're going to take r1, and we're going to subtract 2 of row 2 from it. So we're going to take 2 minus 2. So row 2, we're taking 2 from that. So that's going to be 0. We have 7 minus 2 times 4, so that's 7 minus 8, which is negative 1. We have 1 minus 2 of row 3, so that's 1 minus 6 is going to be negative 5. And we have negative 2 minus 2 times negative 2. So it's going to be minus 2 plus 4, so that's going to equal 2. Then we're going to leave the other rows the same. 1, 4, 3, negative 2. 
0, 1, 5, negative 4. Okay, seemed a little bit complicated. So I want this one in the top position, so we're going to do some row changes real quick. So let's switch row 1 and row 2. If I were smarter at first, I wouldn't have changed row 1 and row 3. I would have changed row 2 and row 1, but it's all good. So let's switch some rows around. 1, 4, 3, negative 2, 0, negative 1, negative 5, and 2, 0, 1, 5, negative 4. I already see a problem in this matrix. And you might be saying, hold on a second, how do you see a problem already? How do you know that this matrix does not have a solution? Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply the third row by negative 1. So we're going to get negative r3. So we're going to get 1, 4, 3, negative 2, 0, negative 1, negative 5, and 2, 0, negative 1, negative 5, and 4. What do we notice here? Negative x2 minus 5x3 is equal to 2, and that same thing is equal to 4. So these two lines are parallel to each other, which means that all three of these lines are not going to intersect at the same point. So this system is inconsistent. And we can reduce this further to show it. So it's not necessary, but perhaps I'll do it for you. What we're going to do is we're going to take R2, and we're going to take R2, we're going to subtract R3 from it. So we have 1, 4, 3, negative 2. So R2 minus R3. So we have 0 minus 0. Negative 1 minus negative 1 is 0. Negative 5 minus negative 5 is 0. 2 minus 4, negative 2. Then we're left with 0, negative 1, negative 5, and 4. What does the second row say when we convert it back into an equation? This says 0 is equal to negative 2. Well, we know that's wrong. So the system doesn't have any solutions. It's inconsistent. So that's solving linear equations. Of course, what we should do if we have a consistent system is we should get it down to some solution set, to some number of solutions, where we have x2 is equal to 3, x1 is equal to 8. We need to get to that point. So this first example, where we had this matrix here, 1, 5, 7, 2, negative 7, 5. So 1, there's that tool, 1, 5, 7, 2, negative 2, negative 7, negative 5. Let's solve this one because we know we can. We've already solved it. So, first time, what do we do? We're going to take row 2 and we're going to make it row 2 plus 2 times row 1 because we want to get rid of that negative 2. So, this new matrix is going to be 1, 5, 7 for row 1, and then we take negative 2 plus 2 times row 1. So negative 2 plus 2 is 0, negative 7 plus 10 is 3, negative 5 plus 14 is going to be 9. So this tells us from this line right here, this tells us that 3x2 is equal to 9, which means x2 is equal to 3. And from there we can plug this 3 value into our original equation here and get the solution that x1 is going to be 8, I believe. It wasn't negative 8. x1 is negative 8. So we can do that. But when solving these, there's two questions you have to have in mind. Question number one, is the system consistent? Does it have a solution? This is existence. In the previous question here, we said no. Listen, it's inconsistent. It does not have a solution, so we can stop. The second question is, is the system unique? Is the solution unique? Is there one solution or infinitely many solutions? So that's something we're going to take a look at in the practice questions next video. I'm doing a video just to practice questions so we can get some of our row reductions under our belt, our row operations, and hopefully you'll learn some stuff there. 
So see that video for practice. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and I'll get to them as quick as I possibly can.